All right, nice, nice, nice. Um, my name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to the second of our weekly Insta sessions. In a couple of minutes' time, I'm going to be inviting the Repeat Beat Poet to join me. Um, we're going to have a relaxed conversation and then re the Repeat Beat Poet is going to share a couple of poems. Um, and I'm really looking forward to having him on. If you've not seen last week's session, um, we started off with uh, Nafisa Hamid and she was absolutely fantastic, as promised. Uh, yeah, shout out to Bailey Banksy. Obviously, I've got my canvas proudly displayed there. Not being very subtle with the Leeds United memorabilia, even though I'm sat in East London. I know I'm probably annoying a few people, but I can't help it. Um, so yeah, my name is Matt Abbott. I founded the label Nims and Folks five years ago. And I just thought, whilst we're on lockdown, it's an amazing opportunity for me to have a chat with some of the poets that I love, um, ask them to perform a couple of pieces, and it removes all of the geographical and financial restrictions that we're usually tied to. Um, I have shared a stage with Repeat Beat Poet a few times at Byline Festival and when Skint and Demoralised played in Dalston in September as well. Uh, he very kindly did a slot there. Um, but where better than to do it right now? So I'm going to see if he wants to allow us. It'll be popping up on your screen very shortly. Let's see. I'm always nervous about this bit because I'm not the most technologically advanced person. Oh, here we go. It's working. All right, mate, how you doing? Yeah, man, doing very well. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, man. Good. Yeah, nice to yeah. see you too, mate. I'm just going to turn you up a bit. Oh, hold on. There we this go. This is nice, isn't it? It's all right, isn't it? Are you in your living room? No, see, I'm in my bedroom, which is my mm -hmm. de facto studio, because I have, yeah. a, um, uh, I have a, like a Bluetooth light bulb, so I can change the colors on it. Oh, wow. Mate, yeah, I've been stressing about tech and getting the right lighting and the right angle and all that, but... You've got it down, haven't you? You've got it sorted. So, yeah, how, how are you adjusting to uh, lockdown life? How's it been for you? Um, yeah, so, so it was really tough for the first, like, three, sort of four weeks, um, living on my own and that. Uh, and, you know, I was planning to move about this time, and so I've just felt like, I, I felt quite, like, you know, stuck in the four walls proper. Um, yeah, I wasn't like talking to people stuff like that. Um, but the past couple weeks, um, yeah, things have got a bit. Uh, I've kind of like settled into like having to change my routine and things like that. So I'm doing better now. Maybe yeah. like a six, six, six out of ten. On That's the pretty good. Um, what How about, about yourself, creatively? Man? Oh, <laughs> creatively. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like. Uh, it's been good to be honest because um, you know I I'm still thankful to have work like I lost a lot of work clearly um, and that was uh, really tough um, but then obviously it was April so NaPaRimo was happening um, yeah. that's National Poetry Writing Month and although I didn't write every day I did write you know like a whole handful of pieces uh, that I was happy with um, and yeah, I've just been re revisiting old poems in a time of quarantine is always very strange, but I've been doing a lot of that as well. Um, and that's been quite a creative act, actually. How about yourself? Um, ah, it's, it's really weird. I find that a lot of the stuff that I wrote before the quarantine, I'm sort of like, as you know, Two Little Ducks, a lot of it's about Brexit and like the Calais jungle. And it's not like those issues aren't important anymore, but I sort of I can't engage with those poems as much. Like, it's from such a distinct political time, but so different to now, that I'm sort of going towards my poems that aren't political, which is weird. But do you know what I mean? It's like I can't get, my, yeah. I can't get myself into that headspace, which is bizarre. Mm. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's cool, mate. And you've been busy. On, you did a gig last week for Hammer and Tongue, and you've been, you've been keeping busy online. Yeah, like, it, it, it has been a matter of uh, just keeping sort of things ticking, because I sort of imagined that the world stopped. And that everything was just completely like, you know, not not happening anymore. But then I realized that conversely, people really stepped up to the challenge, you know, and like in terms of keeping people connected and keeping poetry spaces going. Um, and so I felt quite like buoyed by that. I was listening to a lot of the loud poets uh, doing their episodes. I was oh, watching yeah. Win yeah, Winchester Fest as well. They streamed uh, like live events. For like a month and well, yeah, for like a month and a bit or something crazy like that. Lots of great poetry. Really? So it has, in a weird way, been quite good, hasn't it? Like I was just saying before you came on, it removes all of the geographical and financial barriers. Like I mean, well, obviously, I'd love to be able to pay people to do this, but even just being able to ask someone if you fancy doing it on a Tuesday, it's it's 
it, it, in a way, it's, it sort of made it more accessible, hasn't it? I think it's a upside to how we've had to adapt. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, we have to find things that are, we have to find like continuous purpose through what we're doing still, even if it isn't the same as it was. So, yeah, upsides. Always got to yeah. focus on the positives. Been, been writing myself a gratitude list. Nice. Nice. Well, do you fancy, um, do you fancy giving us a poem or two? Indeed. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do this. Whatever um, you want to do. So I'm going to open with this one, which is a poem that I revisit a lot, um, but it always grows with, like, the same way in which the world grows, the poem grows, and I find that very fun. So this is nice. for the poets. For the fleeting moment capturers that enrapture us. This is for the rhyme flingers and the word slingers, for the pens and microphones gripped between fingers, for the barrier breakers who showed anyone and everyone that this could be done, for the public communicators of your private struggles and for the lives reborn from rubble, for poets writing their way out of trouble, for every poem written that aids a resurrection or sparks an insurrection, every poet that challenges your conventions, every witty epithet that doubles as reactionary couplet, and for all of the poets just surprised by what it is they've created, and for the ones who make all this look uncomplicated, for the secret journals kept hidden, every instrumental or internal beat ridden, every writer reaching for knowledge forgotten or forbidden on every stage and page graced with a verse that did not want but needed to be written, for every seasoned sage or first timer faced with whatever it means to be a writer, for every fabled poet out there telling fables, every identity shunning easy labels, every poem in every language under Babel. For the ones who write for us when we are unable, and for the ones who write just to keep this ship stable. For the poets everywhere, and the poetry that got them there, this is for the poets. Nice. Yes. Beautiful, man. Quality. Great way to start. Thank yeah. You, man. Do you, have you opened your set with that before? N no, well, very rarely. Maybe if I like do an open mic thing, I might do that. But um, no, usually I like have it in the middle or towards towards the end. Oh, right. thanks for the finger clicking that's going on <laughs> in the comments. Yeah. Uh, what? Um, what? Uh, yeah. Finger clicking. Well, do you know? Because I've heard contrasting reports about where that came from. Finger clicking. Do you know where it's from? Um. I don't know where it's from, but I know that, like, you know, so, like, uh, uh, mid-90s Chicago Slam, like, it was around there, um, yeah. I think. But, uh, See, I, yeah, I'm not too hot on it. I've heard that, and I've also heard rumours that it'd be, like, in the jazz bars, they didn't want to put the drink down, so it was a way of, like, when they were watching poetry, I mean, way of, like, clapping without putting a drink down, but I don't know. Anyways, sorry, I'm detracting from your beautiful poetry. I like the idea about but, jazz bar, though. I, well, I've been like jazz poets, beat poets. I, I don't really know. Yeah. That's just what I'm doing. <laughs> I think. So I, my mind's just gone completely to um, a, a couple of poems I have about jazz. And so I'm going to pull them up just because you mentioned jazz, but my mind went, oh, jazz. Nice. Um, cool. And so, yeah, as with, uh, as with the normal set of mine, I've thrown the set list to the wind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw the set list and then abandon it, I think. Yeah, exactly. So this piece is, um, it's another dedication, and I write, de I write dedications a lot. Um, I feel in my, well, I tend to see in my poetry. Uh, and so this one is called, In Dedication to Miles Davis and Bitches Brew, which are both loved by Wakandan progressive jazz musicians everywhere. Yep. Nice. Uh, opens with a quote. I never thought jazz was meant to be a museum piece like other dead things once considered artistic. Miles Davis. I catch a vision of him standing steadfast but hunched over his trumpet at Birdland with wide brimmed hat pulled low over gnarled brow or with wide rimmed dark glasses stretching out like antennae from his temple. Muscular cheeks tensed and plum lips pursed against the mouthpiece as left hand makes a shaka symbol with little finger and thumb supporting the weight of brass and right hand toys with trigger valves. 
his chest rises with the anticipation of sound, a final smack of tongue against lips, and he plays. Man, does he play. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I like that. <laughs> just like that moment when, when, a, when a musician's just about to start playing and you see them take yeah. the breath or the, or the beat, and I love that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have a little detour into the jazz world. I've been listening to a lot of my favourite live albums, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I think it's been keeping me going. What, yeah. specifically jazz or just in general? Uh, in general, but a couple have been jazz albums. Um, I listened to a lot of P-Funk, so like Parliament Funkadelic live albums. Cannot recommend highly enough. Feels like a proper party. And so I get my disco dance on, you know, nice. some funk. <laughs> <laughs> quality yeah. thanks for sending the poems through to the radio show the other day by the way they, they went down really well roaring 20s radio i am a yeah, massive fan i'm a massive supporter i uh, i really enjoy like just yeah i really enjoy listening and you speak really eloquently and really clearly and i, I like that when you're talking about topics so oh, yeah, cheers, i try my best despite my thick <laughs> west <Yorkshire> accent <laughs> um just ridiculous <laughs> Cool. So um, have you got any, I know this is a, either the best question in the world or the worst question in the world, but have you got any specific writing project like on your mind in your subconscious or are you just sort of doing bite-sized bits? Oh, um, yeah. So I'm writing, uh, I'm writing a few verses for, uh, for people who have like, you know, um, who have asked me to write verses for them. I'm thinking a lot about music. So I was uh, putting together an EP and still am putting together an EP. Um, which is set to be my debut, like, you know, release. Um, nice. And I've got a couple of tracks, uh, like, that, that are ready, um, but I'm still putting together the, whole, the whole rest of it. But a lot of it got put on ice because a lot of the money that I was going to have was going towards that. Uh, yeah. But the, the songs are still there and I'm still working on them. So I think that's one thing, a big thing in the background. But I've got projects here and there that are still going on. Uh yeah, and I, I'm enjoying not having to lock myself to projects. Specifically, yeah. over April, I was like, I'm going to just bust out some poems and whatever they are is, is whatever they are. Yeah, it's nice but, to yeah. have that, give yourself a bit of space, in it, and give yourself a bit of freedom. So sort of remind yourself why you write. Sometimes you get stuck in project mode, don't you? And it's, yeah. Believe me, yes. Sometimes we get stuck in project mode when we're yeah. juggling all of the things. I'm sure you can... Like, I'm sure you can empathise, man. What you do with Nymphs and Thugs and also Roaring Twenties Radio. And then, you know, you're doing, uh, like, workshops, obviously. Teaching kids. Book. Kids book. You know what I mean? That's a lot of hats to be wearing, much. Matt. I do too much. But, so, no, it's nice to stop spinning a few plates. Anyways, um, do you fancy giving us another poem? Yeah, let's get it. Cool. Um, so, this one... It, wow, I can even flick through my uh, notebook uh, on a uh, virtual broadcast. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Lily Harrison, great poet who's watching. Justin Emily hey. Joy. Sup, sup, sup. Oh, and Sarah Callahan's here too. Crew Dem. Imagine Millions Crew. Right, okay, so I'm going to read two poems back to back um, that are a bit, well, yeah, they speak for themselves, um, but they're to do with loss. Um, which is something that I, obviously I know a lot of people are dealing with. Um, yeah. yeah. This is uh, Sick with the Weight. Once excavation rhymed with escapism. I would dig for memories, immersed in earth and echoing laughter, listen for lost joy. Now the door splinters open and screws scatter, Grief buried in the walls, despair in time capsules, spring-loaded for me to find with trembling lips and buzzing heart ungrounded. And I miss the one who blew blessings to me back home. Blossomed glossy and wide like mushrooming clouds, swam easy like starlings singing through sky. Where celebration rose in harmony, even as the wailing auntie held my hand and sang. Steal away, little lost boy, rub the, rub the dirt off your knees, return home and be greeted and be at peace. Steal away, little lost boy, rub the dirt off your knees, return home and be greeted and be at peace. 
I see a pear tree in a graveyard. I sent a prayer into its branches, tied around the sounds from my soul, and I waited for fruit to fall. I was still and hoping beyond hope. With my back flat on the earth, I began stretching my pockets with prayers sent up by other people. Maybe they hadn't waited until the time was right, or they didn't know how to spot when a prayer is ripe or rotten. I kept watch as long as I could. Eventually, my arms folded across my chest, head still up towards the heavens, sight sifting through the branches, awaiting my omen, until I fell asleep, and fallen prayers rotted beside me. Beautiful, man. Love it. Thank you. I'm going to take a sip of this juice that yeah. I have. I know, I'm drinking water out of my festival cup. It's depressing, isn't it? <laughs> the amount of pints of warm cider I've had from this cup and I'm drinking tap water. London tap water as well. So that was <laughs> Man, I was, I was mid-gulp. <laughs> that was quite close. <laughs> Sorry. London tap water is, is not real. Like, I, 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 it's, I, 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 it's awful in so many ways. Sometimes you leave and then you realize what air is outside of london and you realize what <laughs> water is and like what trees are and i'm like this is quite wild but you know i'm lucky to at least have some green space around me like sort of near stratford way yeah yeah and you're originally from chelmsford right yes repping yeah. cm2 chelmsford so what's the score in chelmsford now that it, like is there a decent spoken word scene is there a hip-hop scene is there a music scene like what's the crack yeah so <sighs> Um, okay, so I'll start with the poetry scene. There wasn't a poetry scene um, sort of at all in Chumpsford, uh, 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 like from about 2010, sort of like when I, st when I was starting to leave. So when I was like, you know, 18 odd, um, is when I was moving up to London, there was no poetry scene. There was all sort of in other parts of Essex. There was stuff going on in South End and Lee um, and around there. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, since about, I think it was maybe like 2014, 15, sorry, no, sorry, 2016 odd. Uh, so like maybe a couple years ago, four or five years ago, there's been a couple of nights that started up. There was like the Poetry Circle um, that started up. They were based in a venue called The Transition. It was right by the station. So they yeah. were doing events there. And that was a really, it was like a co-working space, creative space. Um, spent a lot of good time there. Um, and then poetry has always been at the Fling Festival, though. So it's always been consistently there. But there's not been right. nights in Chelmsford. Now there's right. a few nights. Yeah. I tried doing a night with uh, Selena Godden at Basement in Chelmsford, mm -hmm. but it was, it was not very well attended. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I've done a couple of gigs uh, like on bills at the Basement, and I love the Basement to my heart. But like yeah. people, people like, you know, who were there for it enjoyed it but not too many people came, but it was, you know, I think there's a, a good taste, like Chelmsford people have good taste in music, like flat out. Mm -hmm. The record fairs are great. Uh, like the, the variety of acts you get just in and around Chelmsford from like jazz stuff to like, obviously lots of great DJs, like lots of great rock bands. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I stand Chelmsford so hard. I love it. Cool. And right now I miss it because, you know, I'm not there. It's very hard. Yeah, I get you. Well, it's yeah. nearly 10 to, so do you want to mm -hmm. give us another couple of poems? Yeah, let's yes, do that. You've got to love another poem. Time flies, cool. doesn't it? In it, though, and it's good to be chatting and enjoying this, like, this digital space, because this is like, you know, I've done a couple of these hangouts, and I'm getting more comfortable in them. Before yeah. They were a bit odd. Um, Verified at first, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> all right so i haven't done much uh i haven't done much uh rapping since lockdown so i'm just gonna have some fun spitting freestyles for a couple minutes nice. let's set the clock Ugh. cool it's incontrovertible rhyme unstoppable 
I'm unbeatable, unbelievable, style unreachable, unimpeachable, unbeseechable, don't speak to me, I'm insatiable, unmistakable, mother, I'm complex and relatable, I'm fully raw, be fully sure, I'm untamable, fully operational, not debatable, my foundation's unshakable, and it's built on the grounds unchangeable, us on the rhythm, the rhyme, having a good time, peace, love, unity, having fun, check the history books, you know I'm on the one, shaking off maggot brain, keep the main vein saying I maintain this higher standard. Every club that I hit, every stage pub screen backyard. I blaze the trail, my verse as the vanguard, rhyme hanging off my neck, holding the key to life like a lanyard. Standard, I'm resisting groupthink. That's that mindless compliance. Automatic action like a kitchen appliance. You going round and round in a suffocating spin cycle and it's frightful. Making the people turn spiteful. Man, chill, kick back and let the rhyme heal. Be real, kick this like Cypress Hill. Be honest, don't fight what you need to feel. That suppression of expression is the ultimate no deal. Fight the wave and blow a hole in your own keel, you feel? Instead, feel the music grip you like a tendril. Groove is on the one and fundamental. Lyrics are essential, highly influential. Four bar rap sheet, don't question my credentials. I like to keep this eventful. I'm writing freestyles in freehand, no templates or stencils. Bounce on the mic, keep you suspenseful. Like, what's he gonna say next? I like instrumentals. Uh, but you know, I spit in idioms in it, even if you don't believe in it. Millions of rhymes, words, similes, and adjectives. I'm prickly or sicker than the Peppa Peter Piper picked. I find a flow, I pick it up, and all the day I have good luck. I pass this on to my friends because the cypher circle never ends. I end up bending syllable and cadence, blending in the pointed with the aimless simile, symmetry, image laden poetry. You'll see me living in synergy, sharing energy easily. Got the vocab ability of General Levy. I'm incredible, like Frozone in any given time zone. I'll make the beat run from the tip of your tongue. Singing dun, diggy dun, da dun. You don't want none, won't be outdone. I got the 411, son. I'm outgunning anyone just for fun. And we've only just begun. But the future reference, my preference from you all is deference. When I'm on the mic, because I speak in full sentences. My intention is to be an all-time great. An updated fan favorite like BB-8. I clean wrappers off my plate, sling it out like a discus. It's an odd job cutting head tops for business. She shum shearing sheep like Sean. I'll make a shearing fan which had never been born. I turn up and turn out at random places, tear through a stage with my torn out pages. You'd be like, how he ain't done yet? He'd been rapping for ages. You'd be reaching for a rhyme, tap out, be gracious. Honestly, <laughs> nah, fuck me, man, good gracious. Where the good vibes and the good vibrations, how can we grow in a mad situation through hip hop? My first infatuation. And as I flick between my high hopes and cynicism, I will strive for balance and optimism. In my mind, they're intertwined like the colors in a prism. But these lights are too bright, they burn, blur my vision. I shut off the visual and enter the surrealism where my dreams are stacked high with pre planned precision. Shouldn't touch my face. <laughs> my inward visualized mind. My inward visualized mind is opulent neoclassicism and it's telling made by me because I am the chief technician. I shuffle my foundations from original positions, I have wisdom and opinions to thoughts and new suspicions. I am marrying my tradition with proper criticism. I got a scientific mind, I know based on empiricism. Tao, Buddha, Jesus Christ, I pick a mix with my religions. I'm a scripture twisting little demon, far from heathen. I believe in the power of words to build or break a whole world. And I mean that literally. Words make the world twirl. Boom. Yeah. Incredible, man. That's just, I have no idea how we do that. That's outstanding. Ooh. Every time Ooh. we smash it. Like uh, uh, Hammer on uh, last uh, week, uh, smashed uh, it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> how man, long was that? You. Couple of minutes? Uh, uh, Three, four minutes? That was about, that was about uh, four minutes, yeah. Man, I'd, I honestly have no idea how we do it. So you're like, one of your names is like the hip hop poet. So um, if somebody is watching and he's really into poetry but doesn't know much about hip hop, who would you recommend as being the most like poetic hip hop artist, if that makes sense? Okay, that's, that point? that's a really good question. And because I'm aware of time, I'm going to answer it in, in two ways, right? So the first way is um, the, like, the artists that I think are like the best, unquote, are the artists who, who I can imagine myself as and sort of the artists like around me. I take a lot of inspiration from like poets and MCs who I really love. And so I'll say them and then I'll say a couple other people. So currently I'm really enjoying uh, Joshua Idahen, uh, Brother Portrait, uh, he's incredible. Um, like uh, Amari Sky God just released some incredible music. Sarah Callahan's Spoken Word EP was really good. Um, 
And there's other people, uh, other poets like around me, but not gonna lie, Joshua Idahan and Brother Portrait, absolutely loving right now. Um, the oh. other answer to the question is um, find the 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 MCs that that just grab your attention in some way. So right. for me, like the sort of most poetic people, um, I mean, not gonna lie, I, I might just say poets. So Kate Tempest no, has some great, uh, like great hip hop stuff. Polar yeah. Bear's got some great hip hop stuff. Um, oh, you put me on the spot, and now I just want to run through all of my playlists. That was a big question. Sorry, uh, <laughs> but actually, this is a good segue, and I'm gonna do it because you know we're here. Um, I have uh, the track lists of my radio show, the Repeat Beat Broadcast, which is where I play a lot of the poets and hip hop artists that I really, really love. Um, and so I think the best way to find out what I properly love is go to that. Cool. Good shout. Good shout. And yeah. that's on Threads Radio, right? <laughs> that is on Threads Radio, like every fourth Wednesday, 12 to 2. But it's all on the Mixed Cloud and a big long playlist. Um, cool. Yeah. I mean, Ty, uh, the, the Brixton rapper and, and, and hip hop poet Ty, who sadly passed away. Big inspiration yeah. now. And you see his effect and like his influence. You know, I've been in the same room as him watching him rhyme so many times and he was excellent yeah um and i take a lot of inspiration from him but also yeah i think there's many things to take inspiration from because it's not always just about what they do with words or how the poet rhymes sometimes yeah. it's about their voice or like specifically what they're saying you know, like you know i love like tupac and krs1 and like black thought and you know there's a lot of uh simultaneous like style and substance yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when some of my favorite artists can do both of that and that's why they're poets like nas and people like this but even uk like mia when she writes rhymes i love the way she writes her rhymes they're really tight uh kano is ridiculous with, with the stories he tells um if you give me another half hour, I could just continue talking about poets that I, and artists that I love for another half an hour. So. Fair enough, mate. Sorry, that was a big question. Um, <laughs> sorry. Do you want to give us another, just one, one last poem, if you fancy it? Yeah, I'll do a super, oh, super short yeah. one. Well, you um, can do whatever you want to do. We've got about five minutes. It's whatever you feel happy doing, whatever you feel comfortable doing. It's entirely up to you. Okay, well, actually, thank you for... for for reminding me of that of that choice actually because there is something that i want to want to read to end specifically cool um and it's a piece i did um when you were kind enough to have me for the skin and demoralized gig uh last year um and i really loved performing it there and it's a piece i revisited recently so i'll read that this is called how to save the british dream a step-by-step -step guide First, remove all chocolate, leaving only a legally approved dream bar. Separate the blood and sweat of children from the wealth generated by those satanic mills. Look past industrialized people trafficking while cheering for the Commonwealth. Fumigate the haunted houses of Parliament and the dusty halls of Westminster. Flush out muddy complexity like dirt in the workings of your white goods. Brush away inconvenient brownness staining sea to blood-soaked sea. Sanitize histories with doctored textbooks and stolen traditions. Painstakingly apply PVA glue to cracks in the floor while tectonic plates shift. Bury the black spots under thick coats of white powder and white noise. Exfoliate in a panicked frenzy. Cauterize festering wounds. Wipe clean the white conscience. Never look back, never look in. Let a white Jesus forgive you all your sins. And please, God, save the British dream. Top class, mate, as always. Absolutely top <laughs> class. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I really, really appreciate it. I'm such a great admirer of your work and um, I'm really buzzing that you were, that you were up for doing this. Um, if you're watching this afterwards, then please give it a share and obviously follow Repeat Big Poet. It's a, what is it, ko.fi.com? Yep, so it's a, basically my donations page, uh, my subscriptions page is called uh, coffee uh, ko-fi.com.
coffee.com coffee.com but with a dash in the middle slash right. repeat beat poet and then cool. uh, yeah repeat beat poet is all of the other social media um if you go to my, my my link tree link that's where you'll find like the proper long list of everything that i have you can keep in contact but i'll i must give a shout out just for the record to all the family so that's Imaginary Millions family, which is a live hip hop jam um, in the book club that we're having on the first Sunday of every month. Not anymore currently, but we'll be back. Shouts to Imaginary Millions family. Shouts to Penting Poetry family. Um, obviously, my hip hop poetry uh, night and community um, been so important to me for the past like couple of years, many years. Uh, obviously, Boomerang as well. Long standing cornerstone and just like you know really good community that have been incredible for poetry across the country for the past five years boomerang and then poetry on the picket line as well which is yes. you know a big big connection um and they've just been doing incredible work during quarantine making sure that people are um well not making sure but just continuing raising awareness yeah. and you know informing people of what's going on um and how they can best like you know learn employment rights and the importance of joining a union um and to you know share collective power and all of that stuff so Sounds i think right that's my me. shout outs yeah cool <laughs> and thank you so much for having me as well um i'm really like happy to be doing this and just i i, I really do rate all the nymphs and thugs work so much uh, I'm, oh, on, I'm, awesome. I'm there on the band camp always checking up on the new releases um, and what, what you and Selena are doing is like, mm, spoken word record label. Yes, and it's great. Oh, cheers, fella. That means a lot. Nice one. Cool. See you later, dude. Peace, man. Thanks to Repeat Beat Poet for joining me just now. I hope you did as well. We'll be back next week, same time, 7.30 to late, with Iona Lee, who is a fantastic poet um, from Scotland who uh, has done a couple of live wire events before as well. So please join us next week for Iona Lee. Uh, please give this a share. And if you're watching this afterwards, obviously give it a share and check out ko-fi.com slash repeatbeatpoet. My name's Matt Abbott. We are Nims and Fugs. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.